Welcome in, Carter. Hello, strangers. Welcome to the fucking show. What's up, everybody? Uh, we're back, and we got a very special guest just right there below me. We got number 40 VFL national champion, two-time SEC champion, Billy Ratliff in the house, personal good friend of mine, and, and you know, former <laughs> roommate even. Woo! Welcome in, Billy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming on, man. Hey, man, I'm honored to be here, on, man. Thank you guys for having me. On. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I know you've got lots of, you know, amazing stories. You've played, you've played in pretty much every SEC stadium, or you know, you've, you've at least played about what every team except maybe LSU, uh, back when the original or the twelve teams um, conference. But, I mean. You know, I know a lot of stuff, man. One of the best things ever happened to me in my life, you know, I can die a happy man, was was being around him and hearing his stories, hearing things that most fans don't get to hear, hearing the back, you know, the back stories on all kinds of stuff. And then when they had the, uh, you know, we were a part of, uh, or I got to be a part of when Al Wilson had his uh, Hall of Fame party at the place with, that I worked at. And I got to just hear all that, and it was amazing. So I'm going to kind of let, you know, Trenches and Cranges ask some questions because, you yeah. know, they don't know as much as I do. So, All right. Um, I'll, I'll go first, Cranges. That's all right with you. All right. Taking Neyland out of it, what's been your, your – not favorite because it's hard to say, but what's been the best experience you've had as far as another stadium? Oh, man. Neyland Stadium. I probably would say just the first time ever coming out of the stadium in, in my freshman year, man. And, and, you know, it was very overwhelming, man. You know, you see it on TV and, you know, you actually watch it and all these things. and But, but actually just going out there and, and, and seeing 100,000 fans just like, wow, this is real deal. Yeah. What's your favorite away game that you've been to, though? A favorite way game. Like a way stadium that you think is really, you know, cool to see. Florida Gators, man. The Gators Florida Swamp. Was, was, was amazing, man. You, know, <laughs> you, got, you got crazy fans throwing liquor bottles at you and just, you know, it's just intense. You know, you got the fans are two feet away from you, from your bench. So they're all over you. So right. it, it was very competitive, man, because their fans was always into it. And I, you know, I love the fans, and that's if the fans ain't into it, it, it ain't gonna work, man. You got to have the fans. I don't care who it is, away home. If the fans ain't in it, you don't have a team. I'm gonna let Vanderbilt know that. <laughs> <laughs> what was Brandon? your least least favorite? Oh gosh, man. <laughs> I'm about to say Auburn, man. I'll be honest. Oh with you. no! <laughs> ah, yes. I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. This 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 is what's gonna be funny about it, though, man. I. The locker on the away locker, I know it's supposed it don't supposed to be comfortable or whatever. You know what I mean, yeah. but Auburn's locker room, the away locker, it's one of the worst locker rooms I've ever seen. I'm talking about even high school. <laughs> talking about, you know, let's say for instance, the bathrooms. <sighs> the stalls are right next to each other, and there's and 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 you can like turn to the right and the left and say, "What's up, man? How you doing, man?" I oh no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, it's, I'm like, I can't take a shit like that. No privacy, no nothing. No privacy right there, man. Oh so, no, so, that's terrible. So you have to wait till everybody get ready to go out, and then you got to run in there and do a quick draw. <laughs> man, dude, that is rough. Uh, what's your favorite food? Oh, man, I'm seafood, man. I love seafood. Seafood. Uh, so okay. it's, it's, I don't care what kind it is. I mean, I eat it raw. It don't matter. Mm. I, used to his, I used to cook him fish every night. I, fish, I, I, any kind of fish, I don't care what it is. I eat it. Okay. Hmm. All right. Another question for you. What's the best piece of advice you got from Coach Fulmer as far as life? Uh, so many of them, man. He's, um. 
don't take no for an answer. You know, a, a lot of people are going to tell you no, um, even though they, they really saying yes. It's got to know how to get it out of them. One way or the other, they got to say yes. I like that. Does Brandon? it surprise you that the team, the, the 98 team, that that team was the one that won the na national championship, but the Peyton Manning teams were not the ones? I'll tell you this. Um, um, 97 was probably the best Tennessee team I've ever been around. Um, it's just Florida. They, they, they had, you know, Peyton's number, man. It was, they came up with every scheme to, to slow him down. You know, it, it's, you know, we had no problem with any other team but Florida back then. But 98, <laughs> we were loaded, man. We were loaded, man. And, and 99, we should have won it again. But I got hurt, so, you know, that's why they lost it. That's right. <laughs> they, it's just, it always, it's, it works out that way sometimes. Sometimes you got that star quarterback that throw in for all these yards a game. But back then, if you guys remember, Losing one game a year was almost, you know, that was impossible to get through. Now you can lose, you know. We're going to see teams losing three games a year going in the future that could still win it all. So it's different. Yeah, things have changed, man. I mean, I, I still I, – I don't like the new way they do it. I mean, because the playoff system, is, it's okay, but I still don't think it's right. You know, when you have teams that still can get in it when they lost to somebody that – they should have dropped out of the pole. Mm, you, know, yeah. you know, I don't care that Alabama only lost one game, but the game that they lost was the one that they can't lose. Because mm, mm, mm. if you lose that game, you're supposed to be out the pole. You know, and if you lose to a team that's, that's not ranked, you're that team that they say receiving votes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you, know, you shouldn't mm -hmm. even have a chance to be in the top four, ten teams. You can't because so you, it's always taught us, man. You know, if you win, you go there. Now, right. if you lose late, you might always give it up. There's no chance you can make a national championship if you lose late in the playoffs. So I know me and Carter feel the same way about this. But I want to pick your brain. Twelve team playoffs. Is it going to ruin the sport? Because you're losing the valuability of every game, right? It's just too much, man. It's too yeah, much. I, I, I think I, I truly wanted to go back to the way it used to be, man. The top two teams. Yeah. You know, the top two teams at the end of the year play for the next championship. You know, I mean, you lose, you know, you got the win to get up to that point. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many people say that, you know, if – this team was in a certain conference and they was able to play Georgia, Alabama, and they got a chance to play for the national championship, but that ain't how it works. Mm -hmm. If you play a 12, a 10 game season with the SEC and you go undefeated, you got to make it. Mm -hmm. There's no other conference out there that even compare. <laughs> I don't care what they say. But I mean, even last year should have been a prime example because you can't tell me that Georgia Michigan wouldn't have been a better game than Georgia Tennessee. Exactly. If you'd have gotten rid of all that playoff, it'd have been a way better game to watch. I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, they knew what they was doing. They knew the matchups. They know who match up well or who can do all this stuff, and that's what they do. And that's why I don't like how they 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 put the teams in there like that. They mm -hmm. know what they're doing. Yeah. Cause that, cause Michigan, Georgia, that would have been man. You talking about a a a, a, a dog fight? Yes. <laughs> Wolverines and dogs, man. That would have been one of a, probably an epic game, there, man. You you know both defenses, offense. I mean, it could have been an easy 10-13 game, or easy sixty one sixty. It could have went either way. Yeah, it was a game I wanted to see. Yep. Well, luckily we did have the Ohio State Georgia game, so at least it was somewhat of a filler. But that shouldn't have that shouldn't have been a playoff game. Mm -mm. Nope. It should have been the game. Yeah. yeah. That was classic. I would rather had seen. I hate to say it, 
I'm not politicking for him, but I'd rather have seen Bama made it in than than TCU last year. I don't know. It was kind of a tough spot, you know. Kind of a tough spot to see him in. But I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, think about it this way. TCU wouldn't have been in it if South Carolina didn't destroy everything because Tennessee had that four spot locked. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're right about that. So it would have been it would have been Georgia, Tennessee round one. And then Michigan, Ohio State, which is great. Two rivals. Best of those two rivals go in. I'm not big on predictions, but I will give you one. Also, uh, you know, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I don't think I'm going to be wrong. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys that I think Tennessee's going to go all the way next year or anything, or I'm going to guarantee a win against anything. But I'll guarantee you one win. We're going to beat South Carolina's ass in Neyland next year. I'll guarantee you that one, you know. Yeah, I'm going to tell you my South Carolina guy. South Carolina got something that uh, most kids don't get a chance to have, and that's a player's coach. This coach believes in every last one of those kids. He doesn't care if you're a walk-on or whatever, reserve, whatever. He loves each one of them kids <laughs> exact same. He don't have any favorites. Right. And look what that team did when they played against Tennessee. They said they was going to whip Tennessee's ass. Mm. And, <laughs> and Clemson, too. Their coaching is the reason I don't like South Carolina. Like, I like Beamer, but I grew up as a kid, a diehard Georgia fan, so Spurrier is like Satan to me. So when he went to South Carolina, I was like, okay, you're in my top three that I'll never root for again. Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't think South Carolina would be as good as this year. I was I – was, thinking it was going to be good last year. I was looking for South Carolina to be what they did against Tennessee all season. Well, did you mm. hear – Spencer Rattler had an interview with 24-7 Sports. Did you hear what he said about going into the Tennessee game? What did he say? They pretty much told him – he pretty much told uh, Josh – was it Pate? Told him straight up, going into Tennessee, we cut the, the playbook in half. He goes, we were doing too much and couldn't get the ball going at all, so we just get simplified the whole game for us. Question is, is can they roll that into next year? You can go with a half a playbook, but can your players do it? Hell, I don't think they could have. They did it even like the next weeks after they beat Tennessee. Didn't they, they turn beat Clemson? Then it wouldn't surprise me if they turned around and lost to Arkansas or something. Well, they beat Clemson yeah. the next week. Yeah, okay. and then had a close game with Notre Dame. <laughs> See, hey, I, I didn't Tennessee that. also have an injury, the key injury that kind of helped that game play out the way it played out? Yeah, but they still got a great quarterback sitting there. Yeah. That was just South Carolina had that, like I said, cut the game plug in half, and they were ready for that game. Well, I mean, it's, 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 I'll tell you this. It's been a while since Tennessee been relevant with anything. Yeah. You know, the world hate the orange and white. I'm going to be honest with you guys. But i tell you this here. Tennessee is on everybody's radar for the first time and I don't know how long. And they're coming to play, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, from what I've seen and heard and watched, this is a totally different team atmosphere. It's, it's the guys, they want to play football now. They got the kids that could compete. They got bodies now. You know, the thing that has killed Tennessee lately has been depth. You know, they don't have enough defensive line yeah. to continue yeah. after the first team go out. They don't have that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what Tennessee has been known for, as deep for defensive linemen. We haven't had that in a long time. I agree, because even through recent years, you guys have had a starting 11 that could compete. Yes. Problem was, was third quarter, fourth quarter, mm -hmm. the grind starts wearing on them. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, I'm, I, like, for instance, with, like, Georgia, what they have now. Georgia have... They're three, four deep at D line right now. Any their fourth screen can start next week if they wanted to. Reason they have that now is because they don't have the coaches don't have to teach the kids anymore. Yeah. And see, when you get to that point now having to teach kids anything, it becomes easy to evolve players now. You 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 teaching you showing players how to do elite stuff now. Mm. And that's what Georgia and Alabama is doing there. That's what I had when I came to Tennessee. I watched, you know, Bill Duff, Shane Burton, 
you know, big guy Steve White, Leonard Little. Coaches didn't tell me how to do that stuff. I watch and mimic everything that they did. Reggie White come in this summer and show us some different moves. I'm learning these things. Coaches ain't teaching me. These players was teaching me these things, and I'm watching it when I got better, and I'm watching them say, hey, I'm going to do it better than they're doing it. And if I'm doing the moves that the coaches already don't show them better than they're doing it, I'm going to tell them this one thing. If I ever get your spot, you ain't never getting it back. <laughs> Speaking of Reggie White, you know, I've always said he's arguably the greatest Tennessee ball of all time. You know, uh, what was what was it like to be in his presence, you know? <laughs> Man, I mean, you're talking about a guy that just, you know, he 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 took all your attention when he's in the room. I mean, you know, you're listening to him, and you know, he come in, and he had this kind of raspy voice. Hey guys, hey, you know, we gonna have some fun today, man. Hey, on this next play, I want you to give him a little inside outside move and club back out. I'm like, okay, Rich, I got you. I'm gonna try. And then you go do it, and he over there laughing at the same time. <laughs> I told you it was going to work. <laughs> he always had things to say that just made you want to listen. It didn't matter what he said. The delivery. It was going to automatically pierce your body and get stuck to you every time he said it. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he would will, he will tell you things about where, you know, he's playing in the league and a guy would cheap shot him or something like that. And he'd be like, he said he'd tell him like, oh, yeah. Jesus coming. <laughs> Jesus is coming. <laughs> and next play, you'll see he don't club the, the tackle out all the way to, to the stadium over there. And he say, told you, Jesus was coming. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, Carter, we had a debate in, 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 about who the greatest Tennessee player of all time was, though. Oh, yeah, I remember this debate. Who, who was mm. your pick? My pick was the guy who's right under you right now. That's right. He did say that. We were all going through the SEC. And I, and I think picking... Unk took Peyton, right? Yeah. I think Unk, <laughs> Unk we, took all, we all took our own. Yeah. Let's we see. My, my, uh, my favorite Tennessee player is probably going to say Al Wilson. Absolutely. Al Wilson, gosh. Whew. Al Wilson and my, I, my second one, I must say, Ray Knock Thompson. Another linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> that was one crazy linebacker. <laughs> Nobody's taking Barry. Billy. Barry, uh, yeah, I'll tell you this. Here. Barry, Barry was a great player, man. He was a gamer. But with me, it's hard to pick a DB. Gotcha. Eric Barry. Mm-hmm. There's so much, uh, so much things the DB needs before him to be able to make that play. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, because Eric Berry was on the field a lot. Yeah. And when you're on the field a lot, you got you got to make a lot of plays. <laughs> you know, go look at Georgia right now, last year, the year before. Tell me how many linebackers had 100 tackles. Not a lot. <laughs> Because not- Georgia, the thing that, that, you know, we were talking about earlier, how Georgia has, you know, two, three, four depth. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons people don't get a lot of tackles at Georgia is Kirby's rotating every two plays. Yep. He and- makes sure it's every – so next year when that person comes in, yeah, you're a starter, but the guy behind you who's a freshman, he's going to get to play too. Exactly. Yeah. Playing almost as much in some situations, yeah. It, it, it hurts that you say that because uh, the whole, you know, the positions and everything else – my favorite Georgia player of all time is a safety. So it hurts when I hear DBs and all them can't be number ones. So I'm like, ah. Now, now, here, now, my favorite right. Georgia player now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm about to take a DB there, though. Okay. It's going to be Champ Bailey, man. Champ's a beast. Champ, Champ. Uh, Champ was the Deion Sanders back then, man. Yeah. Hell, Chan was like that when he got to the league. See, my, my favorite Georgia player, which I think I think you were out of college when he came in, but he was the hardest hitting player, right? And those are always the funnest to watch. Back when you could hit players, 
Greg Blue will always be number one to me. Okay. Yeah. Who's your favorite Auburn player, Billy? Who? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Takio wasn't no joke, man. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Hey, Spikes, man, when I say this man here had no neck. Yes. Still doesn't. How he used to use that head to do what he did, I don't know how he wasn't paralyzed. Because this <laughs> man off the every play, man. I mean, I, I I remember when we had to play them in the um, SEC championship, and God, they didn't know what to do. You know, because we was known for running the ball, running the ball. So all what made us get him out of the way was play action. We, you know, Peyton was one of the best play action quarterbacks ever, and they used that to to beat him. That's that's the only way to do to get to Keo Spikes to do what he did. <laughs> as, as Jamal and them, they didn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me ask you this, Billy. Who, who in your college career, who was the toughest running back to get down? Ooh. I'm have to go with Mr. Edwards back in Georgia, man. Okay. Um, Robert, man, he was he was a special back, man. I mean, he was one of those guys that just he was downhill, and when he got past you, ain't no catching him. All right. So we had to always get him, you know, east west. If he was if he got downhill, it's over. Hmm. Now, now, who gave you fits in practice? Ooh, man, that's we had too many in practice, man. <laughs> you know, you're talking about ooh. We had backs that we, I mean, we had running backs. We had to put on defense, man, because we had so many running backs. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Jamal Lewis, he was, he was hell, man. And you have to get a taste of Travis Henry. Ooh. And that then is, the, yeah. The, the, the little big giant, Travis Stevens. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, those guys were special, man. You go, you know, look at the stats back then. And I'm, I'm, I always talk to them, talk to those guys. I'm like, how on earth did they have that many touches to have that many yards to be, you know, top, you know, one, two, three, four mm-hmm. running backs, and they all play together? That's yeah. that's that's unheard of. Billy, who was your favorite coach to play for throughout um, your entire career? Um, I'm gonna say, Mom, Coach Chavis, man. I mean. Chief brought a lot out of everybody, man. He was one of those coaches that would get in your tail, and he knew how to, you know, get the other coaches to get every ounce of talent out of you. You know, he, you know, I, I came to Tennessee as a middle linebacker, you know, and, and you know, they put a little weight on me, well, a lot of weight on me, and <laughs> put me on, the, you know, D-line, and, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, I tell you a story with how I – End up on a defensive line. Coach Coach Four, my brains me in the office one day, my freshman year, and give me the little speech about you know, hey Billy, I think you're one of our best eleven defensive players out there on the field. I got to find a way to get you to um play more. So I think we're gonna move you to defensive end. I'm like, okay, ooh, I'm a freshman. I get to start. I'm best 11. Hey, okay. So going defensive end, meeting room, and, you know, I'm doing all the stuff, learning all the plays, and get out on the practice field, and I, I'm not starting. I'm, I'm like, okay, I thought I was going to be starting. Mm-hmm. And they moved me to left defensive end behind the best defensive player that we got on the field. Number one, Leonard Little. Oh, wow. How am I going to get on the field if he's starting? I can't. But, you know, the way the schemes were back then, everybody started. So, you know, we right. ran a multiple defense. So, I, anytime I can be out there. But that was me getting on the defense line. It was probably the easiest job I had in my life because I didn't have to do pass coverage or anything. All I had to do is run around slow defense line, offensive linemen. Yeah. All right, let me ask you this, Billy. You've experienced something that 99% of the world never experienced. You win a championship. You go to the locker room. You take off your shoulder pads, all your stuff. You get dressed. What happens that night? 
What's the first thing you do when you get out? After winning the national championship out in Tempe, Arizona, that was the easiest game I played my whole career at Tennessee. And we all looked at each other in the locker room and we all felt like we had another game to play because it felt that it was just that easy because we was like, that's what it's supposed to be like to play against the best team in the country. No, that wasn't the best team in the country, man. We The, the score don't even show how bad we whipped Florida State's ass. I had four sacks that game. And it leaves us a record still. And I don't even, I'm not even the guy that's supposed to be getting sacks. <laughs> I'm a guy that hand out sacks because they're running away from me. I'm chasing them and they, mm-hmm. I didn't care about stats. All I want to do is have fun, jump up and laugh and, 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 and go hit somebody else the next play. Were you sad it was over? But I think, you know, I, we didn't even get to party really, though, man, because the next day, you know, you got to fly and go home. You can't really go hang out the way you want to. And, you know, because if you do, you might miss your flight to get back home. <laughs> <laughs> and you, know, you didn't have that kind of money to be paying for another flight. You still yeah. had to be in business mode. Yes. Until, until you got back home and then you could let it go and do what you wanted to do. Yeah, but I still felt like we had to play somebody else, man. It was almost like we had just won, you know, the conference championship and we had to go play another game. Makes sense. Yeah, but Florida State was a fraud back then, man. They was a fraud, man. I, they, they, uh, the way they talk as if, you know, we shouldn't have been there. I mean, the way the world talked is we shouldn't even had a chance to play for the national championship. I'm like, how is that possible? We are the number one team for how many weeks? And then they telling us we had to hope that somebody else lose for us to get in. What happened with the 99 team? You referenced it earlier. I'm, I'm trying to remember because, you know, non-Tennessee fans, you, you, you know 98, but what happened got, in 99? I got hurt. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. Was it like late in the year or right out the shoot or? Um, it was one, two, three, week four. Mm-hmm. The Auburn game. Yeah, the Auburn game. Yeah. Nice little cheap shot. Mm. Who Crash was it, Dick? Who was it? Um, I don't call names. It was basically um one of um my teammates fell in the back of my ankle or somebody pushed him. Well, I'm going to find out who it was, and I'm going to go get that guy. Well, they got him. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they did. Well, I'm going to get him again. Yeah, How we, long were y'all for we, 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 The way we got people back was just next play, we go whip their ass, man. Yeah. We didn't try to be dirty. We just you know, we just play hard against you, whip your ass. Can't argue with that. How long were you out for for the injury? What's that? How long were you out? I was out, man. That was that was career ending, man. I, mm. got, I worked my tail off to get back up. Um, I was I was on pace to be able to play back play in the bowl game, but the week, um, two weeks before that, I when I went to get the um, cast taken off, when they took the cast off. Had a big open gash in my ankle where it was greenish, yellow, and you can mm. see my ankle bone. Mm. And that is what killed me, man, because I ended up having nerve damage and all this stuff. And God. Mm. But, you know, I'll tell you this. I, I, I still thought I would be able to play. You know, I kept going, kept, kept training, and, you know, and you know, I, I, even, I even worked out for a couple of teams, but they wouldn't allow me to, they wouldn't take me because I was a high risk for injuries or whatever because of the nerve damage. You know, yeah. they had, I remember working out for Seattle and, you know, I, I did, you know, bench press, you know, 225 was 39 times. Uh, my vertical was 38 inches. 
broad jump was 10 9. Uh, my 40 yard dash was 4 5. And Damn. there was nobody out there that was compared to their stats. And I'm like, what else am I supposed to do? But it was, it was just, I, like I said, I couldn't pass the physical. I'm like, mm. I'm physically whipping everybody's ass out here. What else? <laughs> I can do? Bet you in today's times, you, you probably could have got cleared. Yep, I mean, me, I was like, you know, guys, just give me a chance to go practice, show you what I can do. I don't even care about the money. The money will come if you let me show you. But they wouldn't do it because they did NFL, man, they, they are very strict, man. I'm talking about it's like a meat market, man. They they test it, test it, test it, and they know what they're looking for. They can tell you then that that's not going to work. What about who was the, the the player that had the heart attack on the field last year? Uh, uh, gosh. Do you think for the Bills? Yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah, his name. yeah. Do you think that he's going to be cleared to play, or or is that going to haunt him for the rest of, the rest of his career? I think he's out there playing right now. I <laughs> yeah, think, I think he already went back, Granges. Okay, because I think I I saw him. If I saw the date when he was out there, he was out there practicing. Okay. Yeah. All right, Billy, I want to play a game with you, and it's it's Cranjus's favorite game that he plays with me, Carter, everybody on this <laughs> channel. I'm going to name four teams. You can only beat two. Okay, so you got to lose the two, win two. As a you know Tennessee alum and a diehard Tennessee fan, what are the two games you do not want to see lose? I'm going to give you Bama, Vandy, Florida, Georgia. Now this is over the time period. This is this doesn't even have to be right now. We're just saying as a rivalry hatred, who are the two you have to win? Give me the teams again. Alabama, Vanderbilt, Florida, Georgia. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see who you Tennessees really hate more. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you got to be Vandy, man. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I knew that hey, hatred was there. I've been arguing with Carter about yeah, that forever. And, you know, that's that's in-state robbery, man. And you lose to Vanda. You lose all clout, period, yeah. man. It's you more know, like an embarrassment, yeah. yeah you know, yes. the end of it, like, like, you know, Georgia, Alabama, you know, they know that there's a chance that they're going to lose. So you can't pick them. I mean, I, I, I don't like to lose against them. Which I'm telling you, I never lost a night at one of those teams. Congratulations. Yeah, that is a good point. Next one, I mean, I would probably say Alabama, man. Alabama. Now, when you were playing there, Florida had to be top two, right? Yes, most definitely. Yeah. Most that definitely. was the game of the of the year right there. You know, Florida, that was, that was basically whoever won between Tennessee or Florida was the SEC champion. Right. Yep. Because you guys were really the only ones that could, you know, give Florida a good run for their money because they were mopping the floor with everybody else. Yep. I mean, that's what it was. I mean, Tennessee and Florida, you know, we was doing what Alabama's doing. You know, I, hey, I tell you this, guys, we was doing what Alabama is doing right now. Alabama, Nick Saban, the recipe he's using is what we was using it. At Tennessee, he didn't change it. He kept doing what he was, what's winning. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, you don't really? see, you don't see Nick out there doing that hurry up offense like that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. The reason, see, people don't understand what the hurry up offense is for. It disguises your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Your weakness and our weaknesses is our offensive line. So. Get rid of the ball quick is the purpose of the hurry up offense. Yeah. Whenever we once we get some offensive linemen, which we got them now, we finally got offensive linemen. We can slow it down. The problem that the world is getting ready to have with Tennessee is they have. Yet to see the best Tennessee offense that Coach Hyper is going to put out there. Wow. He almost won the Heisman Trophy with a backup quarterback. 
People don't realize that this kid that they got over there right now, he's the truth. He's the truth. I mean, talking about Nico or, or Joe? Joe. Nico got a long way to go. There's a long way to go. He's about 50 pounds lighter than he needs to be. Yeah. Um, the playbook, yeah, he, he did a little bit of it in high school, but he still got some work to do. The thing that 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 everybody's gonna probably get a chance to see this year, Tennessee's running the ball. That is hyper's offense is run first, pass next. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows that, but Imagine if this team is able to run the ball and still have that option to pass. That's not easy to defend. Mm -mm. And that's what all the great teams are doing. <laughs> See what Georgia's doing, dog. See what Alabama's been doing. I actually, from the media days, you can kind of get the hints from what Saban's saying. I think they're going back to a very run-heavy team this year. Yes. Georgia, that's their biggest weakness right now is their running backs. Really? Yeah, we, besides Branson Robinson and maybe Kendall Milton, there's no depth there. There's, everybody's huh. young. Uh, oh, let yeah. me ask you Tennessee guys this. Josh Heupel, does he win a national championship there? What's that? Josh Heupel, does he bring home a natty? Oh, man. I, I still think we're missing. We, we're, we're another year away, man, to be – this is what I call it. We are playing – good ball right now we're not competing yet so what the people don't understand when i say about competing competing is knowing you can win that game yeah yeah knowing you go in here you got a 90 percent chance of winning not 50 50 that's not i mean as everybody you start when the clock starts kickoff 50-50, that's it. But the first drive, that's when you take that 50 away, let them know that they cannot win this game. And that's what Georgia and Alabama does. Mm. Knock you in the face, make bust your nose, whatever you got to do to, to get in their heads, and that's what happens. Let me ask you this. The realignment happens next year, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. let's say these teams come in and Oklahoma starts throwing some serious money and trying to get their boy to come home. Does he take it or does he stay in Tennessee? What's your gut say? Mm. He'll stay. He kind of has like a little bit of hatred for Oklahoma. Uh, I don't think I, – I think right now it's going to be hard to take him now. Yeah. It's going to be hard. I mean, the the foundation that he's built – he, he's building a house now. You know, I, just, I I can see them paying him whatever he wants when that time comes. And if you sit down and talk to him, I don't. I, I think he is. He's happy where he's at. You know, I think he he knows he got a gold mine that he. You know, it's, this is I'd say dream job situation, and that's something that you know coaches didn't take advantage of. You know, they 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 use Tennessee as a stepping stone. But mm -hmm. they forgot that there's a rich mm -hmm. position in football that they could have utilized what they had. Imagine if Kiffin would have stayed. This Man. could easily been a, 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 a semi dynasty right now. I I don't know if I ever see Kiffin hold a trophy as a head coach. Oh, I don't think so. Kiffin, Not at Ole Miss. The, the thing with Kiffin, though, Kiffin was was still – he was too young, man. He was yeah. still partying, man. He, was, he wasn't really focusing on what he's focusing on now. But you can't tell me. You can't you, – you're, you're at Neyland Stadium, and let's say Kiffin's your coach. You're not going to be screaming when you see this guy go for it on fourth down on his own 20? I, I mm -hmm. think – yeah, I put it like this here – if Kiffin would have stayed and continued getting the recruits that he was getting, I don't think he would have had to do that then. You know, because the confidence he would have had on first, second, and third, he would never had to worry about that because he could say, hey, you know, kick it. Let's go. We'll get it back. 
yeah, three and out. So that's the difference in having a, 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 a confident coach than having a coach that just, you know, he just cocky. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and that's, you know, right now, I mean, if you notice with Kiffin, though, man, I mean, he explored a lot of stuff when he was with, when he, with, uh, where am I, in fact, with Ole Miss right now. He's not a dominant, he don't have dominant players. Right. So he has to do the things that he's doing right now to be able to be successful. Now, if Kiffin had what, you know, the, the offensive line and, and, and offensive weapon that Georgia had, I don't think he would ever go for it on fourth and 20. I think he would give it his chance to give him another day to, to survive and make that play later. I will say if he went to Tennessee, man, that, that Alabama-Tennessee rivalry definitely would have increased a lot more. Oh, man, gosh. Oh, wow, yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let me ask you this. Realignment's right around the corner like we just talked about. How you feel about it? What's that now? The realignment. What's your thoughts on it? I don't like it. I'm yeah. I'm old school, man. I'm old school. I like I like what it is. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. I, I think they're doing too much now. They're trying to be the NFL too easily. Yes, I, I just you know, even when I'm hearing about, you know, you know, going away with the East West and all that, just making it just one conference. Like I don't even want, I don't like I, I like the East West. I do. You know, I mean, I've heard them breaking it down into four divisions. I'm like, I don't want that. We're not the NFL. Yeah. You know, I, this is still college. I mean, they're 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 doing too much, man. Yeah. You know, if you keep it simple, it it it, it works. Yep. It it is not one school's fault that they're that good. Yeah. You know, they had to build up to get to be good. You know, hell, people understand Alabama took a lot of ass whippings before they got what he had. Yeah. I mean, hey, and Georgia, Georgia's always been good. They just never got over the hump, and now they finally got over the hump. They got a real defensive money coach now. They've always had an offense. Yeah. Everybody, I mean, I'm like, Tennessee, even when Coach Foreman was at his worst, you know, I used to tell people, okay, when y'all get rid of Coach Foreman, y'all going to miss those, those 10, 11 wins a year. Mm-hmm. People don't start 10, 9, 10, 11 wins in the SEC. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. But now where's he at? But mm-hmm. they got <laughs> rid of <clears throat> Coach Mark Rick. Yep. He was every year. 9, 10, 11 ball games. That, that's the only example where it works, though, getting rid of the guy. That's it. But, but you know, if Coach Richardson had a, a a a a Kirby Smart as a defense coordinator, I truly think that that Georgia would have been a whole lot better back then. The the thing that pushed Rick over the edge for Georgia fans was when we had years with you know Stafford, AJ Green, Muhammad Massaqua, Aaron Murray, and you still couldn't even get us to Atlanta. That's when I think that was kind of like the bending of the nail right there. Well, just I think I th- with Mark, he just got comfortable, man. Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't. He didn't want to change. He didn't want to make the changes he needed. He, you know, when you get those type of coaches, those are the coaches I don't like. You know, like me the way I coach, <laughs> I'm changing. If it's working for you, I'm gonna learn how to do that, and I'm gonna make it work for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I'm not. I'm not that old school, and I don't want to change. You know, that's not me. I mean, like if things is working, like right now. If I was playing in today's football and, you know, I had to change where, you know, I had to put a pillar down to put the quarterback on there, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm going to find the best pillow, you know, and lay them down. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite uh, game day? Like, you know, they have the turnover chain, the the, the celebration type thing. What, what, what's your favorite? Uh, Good question. Celebrated. <laughs> well, what do you mean by that, though? Because that's the, so like, like like the team trophy that you get if you get a turnover or a touchdown. Miami's you know? got the chain. You got Bulldogs get the Savage pads. Or the uh... I don't like none of them, man. Fair. Uh, 
Um, because it is 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 it's too cheesy, man. Like, <laughs> like, because like, like, uh, I, I I just remember the when the when Tennessee started doing the crap where they had the garbage can. Over oh, there. No. I was gonna say, I was gonna say to me, Tennessee is one of the ones that started that. And that's that. That's why I'm talking about it. That's why I'm like, you can't start something and don't don't it, don't make it nice. You know, mm-hmm. they at least at least has something where. You know, I, I do like the, the the gold chains where they put them on, and, and, and but but uh, that's too cheesy. Me, I'm, I'm I don't like none of that, man. I mean, I like to reserve my energy for the next play. Like you never saw me celebrate, man. If you did, you didn't. You had to find it. You had to go deep down and look for it because I'm not. You ain't gonna see it because you know, I, I back then, they, you know, if you got caught celebrating back then, Coach Fullman gonna have your ass run running for a couple uh, miles in the up those steps in Neyland Stadium. Mm. And we didn't do that. But today, I mean, I, I like the, the change, man. I like when they, you know, they put the gold chains on. But other than that, I don't like none of the rest of the stuff. Man. Like, uh, Was there a historic stadium that you didn't get to play in that you maybe due to, you know, not playing or injury or whatnot that just maybe you didn't get to play that day and – you wanted to be in that game so bad and just couldn't. Yeah, that been yeah, like we I think that was ninety eight where we had um Houston. Yeah. Had a lot of my teammates from high school that was playing with Houston. And Houston was known as a dirty team. Like cheap shots, yeah, or whatever. I mean, they lose and they just try to take one of the players out. They didn't let me play this game, man. I'm like, I'm sitting over there in a brand new uniform, nice brand new Nikes. I just got them. I mean, fresh white. I don't, you know, I don't put my little Adidas sign on them and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one game I wanted to play because I had a couple of my ex teammates that was talking noise, like, like, come on, guys, y'all are Houston, y'all are Cougars. <laughs> Cougars. <laughs> you know, I. Real quick, I'll tell you guys something that um I don't know. One of the coolest things I remember being being a young kid, and and what one reason I knew who Billy was back then is because I remember when he got hurt in the Auburn game, and I remember like watching the games on TV going throughout the season. I think it was the Notre Dame game, you know, because even then as a as a ten year old kid or whatever, you knew Notre Dame. That's a big deal, and we played Notre Dame in Knoxville. And they would pan over the sideline. And I'd be looking. I'm like, why is that? There's a there's a player standing and he's just wearing a football helmet. There's no pads. Like, and come to find out, that was Billy. And <laughs> Billy did that. Tell him why you did that, Billy. Oh God, man. I, I wanted to be on the field so bad, man. And 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 you know, I I couldn't hold the tears away, man. Like, you know, I had to I had to cover my face. You know, and I did that, you know, I I I was trying to motivate my teammates, man. Exactly. And me going out there, you know, it helped them realize that I still haven't quit. You know, and that's something about me, man. I don't quit, man. It is it's, it's going to take a whole lot to make me just stop. You know, if if, if I'm in a fight, you better shoot me. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to be a Tasmanian devil until the day I die. But that that time, man, like putting the helmet on, man, I just I just wanted to keep my teammates motivated. And I didn't want them to see the tears, man, because I was, I was so mad because I couldn't play. Mm. And I felt like I was letting them down. So because back then, you know, you had the dark shields on. They couldn't see. You. And. Plus, plus, I had the mirror too. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but those that was that was something that I did, man, just to motivate the guys, man. Yeah. Nice. I, I thought that was super cool, and and um, so yeah, I got to show something. I know every every time you're on a show, you got to talk about the play, and you know. But I want to do it kind of a little different. You were talking earlier when you were talking about some of your favorite players and one of your teammates and one of your very close friends, Al Wilson. 
And, you know, they did that Why I'm a Vol campaign like last year. And I'm sure you've seen this, but I don't think these, uh, cr- I don't think Trenches and Cranges have and, and people that are going to be watching have. But this is something pretty cool. Uh, and it, you know, it, it, it's Al Wilson talking about why he's, you know, why he's a Tennessee Vol or whatever. And, and he pays homage to Billy here. So. Why am I a Vol? Al Wilson. Well, I'm a Vol because I'm from Tennessee first and foremost. From Jackson, Tennessee. And I bleed orange and white. Playing college ball, I made lifelong friends. It was a real brotherhood. Really drilled as he was nailed by Al Wilson. Here come the volunteers. Wherever you listen throughout the world, it's football time in Tennessee. Arkansas, 1998. Everything, everything is riding on this football game. Yeah, yeah, I I was in my own zone. As Tennessee's swarming defense is led by middle linebacker Al Wilson, it's intercepted by Deon Grant. Get F6. Touchdown, Tennessee. There's Wilson with the sack. You know, it was, uh, you know, Billy Ratliff just being Billy Ratliff, you know, calling out the offense and telling them, do not put your helmets on. We're going to get the ball back. Previously, I had the previous series before that, I'd hurt my groin. So I was out of the game, taped up, iced up. And I remember Billy saying that to T. Martin. Sterner lost the football. He stumbled and fumbled, and Billy Rodman recovered. And he actually made the play happen. And from there, the rest is history. Gab, ham, six. That's all. Touchdown, Tennessee. Now that's why I'm a ball. That's awesome. It's pretty high praise right there. Yeah. Man, guys, believe it or not, I mean, I'll I, I tell you about that, man. Like, you know, Al was being a little modest there, man, but he was chewing our tails out on the sideline over there, man. Because, <laughs> you know, he's already mad because we losing to Arkansas, man. You know, this is a stat team, man. This is a team that we, you know, we 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 trying to get, you know, 100 yards or less. <laughs> Right. You're trying to, you know, get five, six tackles for loss mm-hmm. each. You know, and, and and Arkansas came out and <laughs> they wasn't playing, man. They 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 came out to win that game, man. And you know, I just remember the scouting report that they gave us about offensive linemen that they had and and, and the one lineman they had was Brandon Burswer. And, you know, they had told us about the history of him being a walk on and everything. He made the team and he was a technician. And I say this man was a beast, man. I mean, I I played against a, a lot of great offensive linemen on my team in practice every day. And he was the man that I, I, I never thought I'd ever play against, man. I mean, I couldn't do nothing to get this man. I had zero stats before that play, man. I didn't even have I didn't have a pressure, I didn't have an assist tackle. I didn't have anything. But I do remember when, you know, the, the time when T was coming off the field and I said those words and and, 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 and just to kind of keep him motivated. You know, it was kind of like reverse psychology. I'm just, because me, I talked a lot back then. I'm, I'm talking, I'm smiling. I just had fun on the field. And I said, I tell you, hey, man, keep your helmet on, man. I got it, man. I'm about to get this ball back, man. Hey, don't even worry about it, baby. And <laughs> I didn't think it was going to happen. But, you know, I, I mean, the plays they called, they just called a base defense, man. We didn't have no blitz call or anything. And all I can think about it was just getting off the ball, man. I'm just I, I'm just going to I'm gonna run a 40-yard dash, put my hand in this man's chest, and just run up the field. First play, 
I get a tackle for loss. I was like, hold up, man. This man don't take the play off. Something's not right. So I said, okay, cool. Okay, I hit this man is human. As he was kicking my butt, guys, I'm talking about Stinger every other play. Pow, ugh. Pow, ooh. I mean, I even got Darwin Walker to switch with me. Darwin was the strongest player on our team. Darwin was benching almost 600 pounds. Jeez. I'm like, hey, you switch, man. You get over here. He's like, all right, cool. I tried. One play, he hit the man. He go, oh, shit, why? Nah, man, you got to get back over here. <laughs> get back over here, Billy. And that next play, I got off the ball so fast, man. And I think, you know, Brandon took an extra step that he normally didn't take. And as I hit him, he started tripping. And when I locked out, it was over. I had opened up the shoulder. I said, oh, I got you now. <laughs> <laughs> and as I opened the shoulders, I looked down. The ball's just laying there. I'm like, wait a minute. Ain't no way this ball just sitting here, man. I mean, it was like, it was like slow motion. Everything just stopped. And the ball was just laying there. And every the only thing I'm thinking about right now is jumping on it and just tucking. Ain't nobody getting this ball from me. But me, I just got on it and jumped up so nobody can get a chance to even take it from me. Right. And, of course, all my linebackers, everybody said, man, why you jump on it, man? I was about to pick it up and run it back. I was like, man, shut up. <laughs> yeah, you know you ain't gonna pick it up because as soon as you try to pick it up you know I, I mean it's wet out there too you know how the football is it, it, it squeezes out and everywhere you can't hold on to that ball when it's wet yeah but yeah but i was it was more of a re reverse psychology thing man just trying to keep my teammates motivated man billy i wanted to ask you this take this with a grain of salt i'm asking it in the in a silly way here uh but you being part of the last national championship team tennessee had is there a part of you that, like, would you love to see Tennessee go on a reel here of five natties over the next 15 years? Or do you like kind of being part of that last team that? No, I want them to get another one, man. I mean, it's, 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 it's embarrassing these last, gosh, years, man. Like, you can't even, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to wear the orange the way you normally wear it, man. You can't stick your chest out the yeah. way. You well, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's 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 different when you can continue to say we still whipping y'all tail. <laughs> we still do it. I mean, you can't do that. Last year was the first year in a long time that I can just say, "Told you so." Yeah. And take everybody's money. <laughs> You know, because these guys, I mean, some of these guys, I mean, hey, you got like Sean Ellis and say, man, hey, shoot, I'll pay you 10 to 1. <laughs> it's like, what? So, yes, I want them to win another one. That's what, that's why, I mean, it's it's it's, it's nice to say things like like right now with, with um, Georgia back to back. That is something that is, is so hard to do. Mm -hmm. it's not easy. Everybody thinks it's just easy. No, it's not. Ask Alabama. They think they're going to win it every year. Like right now, Georgia think they're going to win it again. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they, they think they're going to win it, but yeah. it's not that easy to just do it. Everybody's not going to lay down. So people don't understand that. They think just because these teams are good, they automatically going to win. I'm like, they don't work that way, guys. <laughs> I started watching Georgia when I was a kid. Mike Bobo was the quarterback. So I'm still in that whole, did we really win the last two? Like, I, it doesn't still, you know, feel like that's something Georgia's able to do because my whole life it's never been there. I mean, you guys have got it, man. I mean, it's, it's all about the D-line, man. If you guys got good D-line, y'all going to be okay. If you don't have a D-line, you're not going to shine. All right, let me ask you this, Billy. There's a chance that uh, this year, for the first time, I'm going to go to Neyland. It's going to be for the Georgia game, which is a huge game this year. What can I expect as far as atmosphere and crowd for this game? 
No hoes bars, man. I mean, all right. about, you have a great time, man. I mean, Tennessee fans are, 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 are probably some of the best fans you'll be able to hang out with, man. They show Southern hospitality. And plus, hey, come hang out with me, man. We we, we going to have a good time. I might do that. We might, you know, dish the guy to you, you know, on top of you. But no we'll, we'll hang out. <laughs> <laughs> we like to have fun. I mean, me and yeah. I, I love tailgating, man. I'm like the only tailgater now, man. I didn't, I didn't know that. The fans were doing all that out there when I was playing. <laughs> yeah, I told Carter I'm, I'm going to try to go to that game, but I'm going to have to pull Carter down here. So I'm, I'm in North Florida. I want to pull Carter down here one year to go to the cocktail party with me. <laughs> he's he's got experience at one time. I had three goofy little questions I wanted to ask Billy. Talk to me. And then I will be through with my questions. Billy, when was the last time you cut the grass? Oh, man. I don't have to do it anymore now since I got a remote control with my son. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, you know, he's at that age now where he 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 automatically goes out there and do it because he wants something. Mm-hmm. So it's been a while now. Okay. When's the last time you drank a beer? Oh man, it's been a while since I did that, man. I, I probably want to say maybe about six months ago. Okay. And lastly, I'm going to be disappointed if this one ain't, ain't too far away. When's the last time you grilled a steak on the grill? Say it again. <laughs> When's the last time you grilled a steak? Uh, probably would say maybe about two weeks ago. Okay, right on. Yeah. Billy's, look, when I lived, when I lived over there, you know, at that house, it's actually that room he's in right there. Every night, Billy was grilling something. I mean, or frying something. Billy's a Billy's a cook. Yeah, I love to cook, man. I love yeah. to cook. And he never disappointed me. Yeah, but and, I love to cook, man. I came from so I, I, I was raised on a farm, man. You know, like you know, I, we we grew all our vegetables, and you know, we killed all meat, and. My family, we, I mean, we never went to the market unless we you know, wanted salt or pepper. You know, we had our own milk, butter, jelly, all this stuff. I and, mean, you know, I had never eaten at a restaurant before I came to Tennessee. Wow. Yeah. Billy's a Mississippi boy, just like myself. I was, you know, um, I mean, you grew up there. I, I was born there, but, uh, we're kind of, I know we're getting close to the end of the show here, but I wanted to point something out. A lot of people don't know, but Billy here, you know, and he's, he mentioned his son. His son is a great basketball player. But but not only is his son a great basketball player, but Billy was a great basketball player. And I believe, Billy, if I remember correctly, you were recruited by North Carolina. Yeah, that's, that's, that was my actual first scholarship offer, man. Nice. Yeah. My first scholarship offer was um, would have been my sophomore year. Um, Carolina offered me a scholarship, and I remember my junior year, my first injury ever, and they pulled it quick. <laughs> but um, so I mean, but I had so many offers with football, so it was it was school was going to be paid for. That's what I was looking for. Right on. What made could, you choose Tennessee? Um, I chose Tennessee because of my teammates, man. Um, um, class of 95, majority of those guys reminded me of one of my teammates in high school. And that's what made me come to Tennessee. I mean, the stadium and all that stuff, I didn't care about that stuff. Like, all they had to do is give me cliques and uniform. I was going to go knock somebody's head off. Fair that's enough. why I came to Tennessee. Well, I can tell you this, uh, when when I was living up in Knoxville, me, Billy, and his son, Isaac, I've always, look, I'm not a, I've, I've never been a great basketball player or nothing, but I've always felt like I could, I can shoot okay, and I, I love to play horse, and I'm pretty competitive with it, but when I played this man and his son, that was a whole different ball game. And these guys are shooting it from, like, 50 <laughs> yards away. I mean, I did not stand a chance. Uh, it was all fun, Carter. You can shoot, man. Hey. Just 
Just take a little bit more practice. How did you <laughs> meet? How did you two get to know each other? Through uh, through Volunteer Roadshow. Okay. And uh, you know, I I moved up there, and you know, I I worked. I kind of well, I did. I worked for for Billy, and and then uh, we just became really good friends. And, okay. And uh, I, you know, he offered me a place to stay while I was up there for a while. So yeah, man, it's like family to me now. Most definitely, man. Now, Billy, another side question here: How big is your ticket stub collection? Um. <laughs> I only have one ticket. Ah, uh, my collection. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really ticket. just taking stabs at Carter. Yeah. Here. Carter's ticket stub is ridiculous. Yeah. I only have one ticket stub, man. That's the ticket stub they um they created when um, they had me as a Tennessee legend for the game. And I got that ticket. They had me on a, the ticket for the Memphis game in '98, and I have a, I think it's what, 40 of those tickets. I'm gonna show you right now. I got it. I get it real quick for you. Hold on. I hate it because I feel like there's so many questions. I feel like I've wanted I to ask, I'm and, and, and and they they don't come to me when I need them. The minute we end this. I'm going to be like, oh, my God, I should have asked this. Oh, trust me, I'm the that. same way. Yep, that's that's it. That's awesome. That was against uh, UTEP in 2018. And uh, they put Billy. It was 20, uh, you know, or, yeah, 20, uh, 20 years of the, from, you know, they're honoring the 98 season. And so each ticket, you know, like they had uh, Fulmer with the trophy on the first one. Then they had Billy. They had uh, Jeff Hall, our kicker. Um, I got all of them, I think. Uh, half of them just went to the floor, but uh, yeah, Peerless was on the Bama one, they put T on the Charlotte game, and well, Sean Bryson was on the Kentucky ticket, and then lastly, they put Al Wilson on the uh, Missouri ticket. So, now have you talked to Fulmer since he's became AD, and how's he liking it? Oh, yeah. He's not the AD no more. Well, I know he's not there no more, but when he got the yeah. job, did That's it fine. seem like he, he was into it or just something he was just like, ah, I'll do it for the university? I mean, he was into it. I mean, he was having fun doing it. I mean, he, he – I'll tell you this, man. That man loves that university, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he, 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 when he took the job, I was surprised because I knew Miss Vicky was going to be pissed. You know, she finally got him, you know, to herself – yeah, and we got a chance to really start enjoying the grandkids and stuff, and then he went back and started doing that. Oh, she was hot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he loves it, man. I mean, he's he's he he is a different party animal if you you get to know him. Real quickly, uh, and I promise I'll I'll leave you alone. Uh, <laughs> do you have any funny story like did, playing at Georgia? Did you almost get bit by Uga, or did the the eagle at Jordan Hare? you know poop on your helmet or something you know you got any funny yes i, I think uh let's see georgia would probably be a funny one when you know because as the visitor team get ready to go on the field like georgia fans are right above you and they are able to you know spit piss or whatever they do and and i don't know what it was but there was always water coming down going through there and I remember them telling Leonard Little that someone just pissed on you <laughs> and Leonard got, he was so mad man <laughs> I said oh lord why they do that because now Leonard's about to go kill Quincy Carter <laughs> oh no and he really did though he was knocking the heck out of Quincy that guy well, when you talk to Leonard, tell him it was no hard feelings. It just really had to go. <laughs> <laughs> but Georgia was always fun to play out too, man, because the, their fans were crazy too, man. They, they, uh, everybody just hated Tennessee back then, and, and I loved it. I loved it. Just like everybody hates Georgia right now. Yeah, that's, and that's good when you, that, that's when you know you're good when people hate you. There's one fan base that hates us the most though, right now, and they're not even our rivals. 
<laughs> Alabama can't stand us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, it's, it's called jealousy now. It's yeah, called, there's some, it, some commenters it, 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 upset with that one. They, 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 they realize that <sighs> it's an even playing field now. <laughs> mm-hmm. One of the big advantages of having your team suck, you can just sit back and watch everybody else fight it out. <laughs> I ain't got no dog in the fight, so I can just sit back and chill. Well, hey, Auburn, hey, I'm telling you this here. They got a coach. They got a coach that those kids going to want to – they're going to love playing for. And when you got somebody that's homegrown, they play for the team, and they love the kids like that, those kids will do anything for you, man. And and, and I know it's gonna, it's, it, it's not going to be an overnight change. Mm-hmm. Like you guys are going to – I say you're going to give them four years, man. You know, because it, it's not easy getting recruits the way you used to, but – and. He's going to have to um, – Hell, I'll take eight wins in, well, in, in three uh, years. See, see, and that's that, that's the way I was too, man, being realistic. Eight wins is a lot in the SEC now, yeah, and, and especially on that side. And, it's, and it's especially starting next year. It's only going to get harder. It's going to be tough for you guys this coming up season, man. Mm-hmm. All right. That schedule is brutal, man. Mm-hmm. Every well, matter of fact, everybody in the SEC schedule is brutal. Because I, want, I want out of the SEC. I want to go to the ACC. Ship Auburn off. To, <laughs> but, uh, we should have been in the SEC East the whole time anyway. But that's neither here nor there. I'd rather go to the uh, uh, MAC or something and dominate over there. Fuck Alabama. Fuck Georgia. <laughs> get them. Get them. I'm tired of them. Them guys. I'm ready to get the fuck away. Uh, sure. They they telling me that LSU is going to run that league this year. I don't see it. And to me, it's a it's a four way race with, with Georgia, Tennessee, LSU, and Bama. It's gonna be a tough man. The only reason LSU is hanging around in that conversation is they have the best returning proven quarterback. That's that's really it. But well, see, people don't understand though; they don't have office line. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> sure. So you see a whole lot of hurry up offense this year from them. What's scary though is if you see the five stars sitting on Bama's offensive line right now. Mm. I know they are loaded in the trenches. I already know it, man. Loaded, shoot, y'all loaded. Yeah, I know, but like, I, I the, the reason I'm trenches is because I love offensive and defensive line, so I try to pay attention to it. And, and something about it, it seems like this is like the perfect year for their offensive line. Like it's all coming. Like Georgia's replacing three or four players. Of course, they've all got playing time. Right. But they have tons of experience returning for that Bama team. Yep, because like y'all have a great defensive line coach. That's huge. You know, Tennessee finally got a defensive line coach, and that's huge. You know, we finally got kids that 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 want to come here and play. Thank God to the NIL, because that. Is what saved the whole world right now. Yeah, and and Auburn finally got a head coach. They don't have a bathroom, but they got a head coach. <laughs> Four now. I know we haven't played a game under freeze yet, but I'll tell you guys this: for the first time since Tuberville was there, I feel like Auburn's got their first true football coach. I was not a fan of Melzon, and I was never a fan of the Harson. I was had a little bit of optimism, but. It got off to a rocky start, and the, I don't know. Yeah. Malzahn overstayed by about four years, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it kind of feels like we, we'll see, we'll see. I don't want to be optimistic. I don't want to get my hopes up. Albert administration didn't want, didn't want the last coach before he even stepped on the field. Right. I mean, they, yeah. they were all against that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Harson didn't stand a chance. Yeah. No. And he didn't do nothing to help his his case either. It just nah. was a bad fit, and I don't know. I'm glad that it's over. I I just wish Malzahn would have been gone earlier than he was. But either way, uh, it's been it's been a rocky road for Auburn fans. So, hey, trust me, I know the yeah, feeling. yeah, yeah. I know the feeling, man. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We're talking about a university that dropped rock bottom that yeah. quick. That's not easy, man. You're talking about a team that's, that that was dominating. And like then we, it went to sugar real quick. We've all had our we've all seen our schools lose to those 
oh shit travesty games you know uh yeah what off top of your head what was the worst loss you've seen tennessee have i want to say would have been a couple of them man not necessarily score wise but name wise Uh, georgia state wow was that the which was which one was the homecoming that was Wyoming. That was yes. 2008. Oh, that, was uh, that don't even sound right. Uh, uh-uh, don't. It don't like work. Football team. Wyoming. Their colors are brown and piss yellow. Oh <laughs> man. What's yours, trenches? What's the worst loss you've seen Georgia have? Uh, the home. I'm gonna go homecoming as well. When I went to homecoming and we lost to Vandy. Yeah, that's I, I get it. It's SEC, but that year we shouldn't have even came close to Vandy. Like, just like you're saying on the Arkansas game, that was our stat. That's why it was a homecoming yes. game. We're supposed to destroy Vandy. Aaron Murray ends up losing the game. You don't lose the Vandy built. Those are only Dothas lawyers, and those are not football players. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. if we ever lose to Auburn, that's, that's in there too. <laughs> this is about <laughs> to that point now. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I can't even get a word in here. Just, what can I say? George has beat us like 18 out of 20 years. So. Oh, man. But hey, Auburn always – they I, I like Auburn, though, man, because they always knock Alabama off when they, at yeah. the right time. That's all we're good for is just fucking up Alabama season every once in a while. <laughs> I mean, I used to root for Auburn all the time, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Well, I guess we're going to end it here. Uh, Billy, man, thank you so much for coming Great on. Time. And the stories, you know, just amazing. And we hope to have you on again soon. And, uh, you know, I miss I miss you, bro. Hey, man, appreciate you for having me on, man. I mean, I don't mind any time you want me on, man. Just all I need is 30-minute heads up, and I'm here. All right. Awesome. Well, let's do it. it. Well, and next right. time, next time we got all the questions out of the way. Next time we can get him in here and go straight through the the format like we normally do, and yeah, just roll with it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we got time, man. We got a long season, so let's make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Last season of real college football feels like. Oh well. yeah. Well. All right. Well, everybody out there. Appreciate y'all for watching us, and we'll see you on the next adventure.